This is Jeremiah Craig coming at you from Boston. Today, I am going to be talking with Sarah Ford from Ranch Road Boots. And I'm really excited to have this opportunity. This is an Ask the Bootmaker sort of live stream. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Wow. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. You're helping, helping all of us pass the time. I hope you're holding up okay with everything that's going on. I got some questions here from everybody and also some ones that I put together. Uh, I'm wondering if you can kick us off with a quick little origin story of Ranch Road Boots and uh, what got you into this for everybody who's really not familiar with Ranch Road. I grew up in San Angelo and my grandfather, Daddy Tom, was a big influence in my life, just a ton of fun. Um, and he was a legit cowboy back in the day. He, he, he moved to San Angelo with his family and started reading water meters after he was a cowboy, but he, he broke courses for a living for many, many years. And it was just a big influence on me in general. It would always take me to the rodeo. Um, I didn't grow up riding myself. Um, he, had, he and my grandmother had four kids, and he didn't want any of them to learn how to ride because he wanted them to go to school. And so his, his fear is if they started cowboying that they would drop out of school, and he was really, you know, they were, he never graduated from high school. So he was always really big on them getting an education, which is how I grew up with a uh, you know, grandfather that's a cowboy, but dad that had nothing to do with horses at all. Um, so anyway, Daddy Tom, though, always had a great pair of, of boots. And his boot maker, he, he used to buy boots from ML Eddie's boot shop off the shelf that a custom customer would reject. They have, they have quite a few boots in their stores if you go visit the stores that you can buy. Um, didn't work out or whatever reason for a customer. So my granddad never had a pair of custom boots himself but he did um he, he he would always wear Letty's boots and so from a young age um he would always you know give me the the you know whatever i wanted the pink justin ropers back in the day to the the latest wow. ones when those were those were in which i think are super cool um so daddy tom was just always a, a great you know great fun person for me to be around i was the youngest of all the grandkids and, and so when I started a boot company, originally Ranch Road did only custom boots. And, and I can go into why on that. But we, we started in 2012 only doing custom boots. And I, I, w I just wanted like clean classic designs because I felt like a lot of the boots were really trendy looking, but they, are, they were well made and they could, you know, last forever, but maybe the styles wouldn't. So much so I, I always wanted to make like clean classic designs um when i started it awesome and i think you did such a great job especially with the walker i mean clean and classic is it, are the two things that come to mind when i look at this boot without a doubt in fact a lot of other people have noticed that too and one of the questions that actually came in from somebody on instagram was what inspired the no toe stitching so you're going in that clean uh that that clean style design what what inspired that yeah you know, so i like whether you call them a toe bug or toe buggy or toe flower i call it toe flower but the i really do like toe flowers um i and and so it's not that i i don't like them but if you know if if we're, when we're sampling a product if i can't get it exactly right for the boot i prefer it to be totally like clean mm -hmm. this year uh for spring actually we have a women's boot called the sagebrush and it has th the simplest most i just love how clean the toe flower is on it we made a boot back in the day a packer style called the uh, b county and it it's um it had a similar just single stitch on there. It's almost, it's just almost decor. It is decorative, but, um, I, so I kind of go, I don't, I, I go back and forth on it and it just depends on the boot. And I felt like with the Walker, um, it looked just better, just plain how it was. And so, you know, doesn't need to add it. I didn't need to add anything else to that. So true. Same with the Cabastrano. 
With I put the Walker, by the way. Um, what do you think about it in black? Oh, that would look so slick, without a doubt, without a doubt. Would you keep it with the same stitching color too? Yeah, but so here's another question: What people would like more? Um, the stitching on, if you hold that up again, I don't have one with me. No worries. Um, the, that one, see, it's white on brown. So mm -hmm. I've done it white on black and then black stitching on black. And uh, it, we ended up going with the black stitch on the black boot. So it doesn't pop out as much, but it's still really pretty. Um, and I'm kind of torn on it. I like it both ways. But if we do a production of it, it'll most likely be all black, including black stitching on it, too. Black like the Cavastrano black, not like the gray that you have for the Fayette. Yeah, yeah. Cap like, yes, like the Capistrano black. Awesome. That's, that's so exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Another question yeah. um, I'd love y'all's opinion on, too. So uh, the... the uh, the kind of the Fayette is a distressed gray. And so um, the Walker is not distressed at all. And so another thing is like some people really prefer a more distressed look right out of the box and others prefer to put the patina on themselves. Like, you know, with just wear. how do you feel about that? I have always been the kind of guy that likes the clean look and then wears it uh, myself. And, because uh, it's, it's sort of the, the scarring that makes the personality mine, right? It's, it's, it's my boot. I know where I got a certain scuff or a certain scratch and then sort of tried to um, condition it and make it not as apparent or, you know, it's just, it's the personality. So I personally prefer to have a clean boot and then make it mine through wear. Um, but I know there's several other people who like it to come distressed. What does everybody else think out there? Neil says he likes the uh, black idea too, but he loves the way the brown looks. Does, the, um, does it bother you when you scuff up, when you get a ding in your boots? Sometimes, it depends. Like, if, if I have a really nice exotic pair, I'll get upset if, it's a, if I get a scuff in a Cayman boot or something like that, but I, I feel like in this, style like the scuffs just make it have a little bit more personality i'm already starting to get a little little scuffs here and there um can you see the light on this oh yeah <laughs> actually it's too dark these are like super like never been never seen polished but i know we get we get um you know customer service answers a lot of times we'll get um people that are upset because they'll you know, there's a scuff and they want to, and I, I feel like that's the point. It's like your story of your boots and you want to keep them looking nice, but you polish them. And it's, I mean, they're on your feet. So yeah. it's not like a hat. <laughs> they're walking around on the ground. So it's like unavoidable that it's going to happen. And so I'm on the much, so much in the camp of just embrace it. And it tells a story about what you're doing. And, um, and it's, you're, it's unavoidable. And it's like, don't, don't worry about it. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, boots are made to handle things like that. So I, I feel like they're boots at the end of the day, unless you got a, unless you got the exotic one. And then I kind of am a little bit nervous about the scuffs. <laughs> Fair enough. Neil agrees. He says he prefers to have a clean boot and wear it himself. It's five o'clock here. So here's the two beer choices we have. Both Scottish options. This is a stout and this is an IPA. So... Ooh, I'm I'm always one for a stout. I like the heavier beers. That's what, that's what we'll have then. Awesome. Cheers. All right, cheers. With regard to what's going on in the world right now, uh, the COVID pandemic, is that affecting your business any? And how are you reacting to the current climate with that? Yeah, it is. Um, um, unfortunately, it is affecting our business because, you know, right, right, rightfully so everybody's scared about money right now and no one knows what the economy is going to do and so um uh, discretionary purchases have have slowed down right uh and so that effect that affects ranch road too um so there's no there's no way to um 
you know, from a pure sales standpoint, they for sure slowed down. Uh, and that's, it's also hard too to get, for, to, you know, just as far as like PR, or just trying to talk to, you know, media outlets or anything that that's very hard too, because everybody's mind is like so focused on that. Um, I think we're probably already seeing like this, like people want to escape and they want to do something, you know, do something else. And so um, I think this is a, for sure a temporary thing. And so I, I don't want it to become a permanent thing. And unfortunately, I know it will for a lot of uh, smaller businesses, it'll turn into a permanent thing. But for me, I see it as a very temporary thing. So we're working on, we're about to do our spring launch the first week of April, and then um, already doing fall sampling as well. And so we just have to get through it. Summer is always um, a slower month for, or slower months for boot sales anyway. So it, 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 it hit us at the, at the end of kind of like our busy season. And then it's normal for us to go into a slower period until we create a flip-flop. Um, summer will always be a little bit slow for us. No doubt. I saw that you were also uh, donating 5% of sales right now. Yes, uh, to the Doctors Without Borders. So, um, and they, I mean, just, you know, during this and like previous to this, they're all, they're all over the world helping the most in need. And so I felt like, um, we need, we already, we, we do a, a donation to Semper Fi Fund at the end of every year, but I felt like it was an opportunity to also help out, you know, and in a way we can right now. Um, and, and during March and April, we're going to do 5% of all of our sales to Doctors Without Borders on top of our annual Semper Fi Fund. That's great. That's great. Um, so I got a few questions from some Instagram users that I want to run through now. So I'm going to switch it up a um, little less serious talk. <laughs> uh, so there's been a lot of questions. Probably the most common question I've received uh, has been, are you planning on expanding your width size offerings anytime soon? So we, we, started to this fall and then I held off on it. So we started making some of our more popular styles in uh, 3E width. And so I've got them made and some and certain styles, but it's just really expensive for me to carry multiple like widths. And and from a um I'm trying to get like like you, we're trying to focus on getting the basics done correctly, which is just standard width for us. And then we can do, you know, we need to add shoe care and belts and widths. And widths is like the biggest thing we, we hear demand for would be uh, in men's for uh, at least double E and maybe even three E in some of our more popular styles. So I hear you. I know we need it. Um, it's really a lack of, it's a, it's a kind of a bandwidth and a money problem for being able to stock it because I have to buy the boots or I have to pay to make them all before I can sell them to anybody. And so it's just a, 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 a more of a cash burden is the only reason, the biggest reason why we haven't been able to. And you also have to get it right. So from a development perspective, we're, we're trying to do small releases like so small spring small winter and um and and in adding like widths it's almost like you're testing like a whole new thing in addition to some new styles too so that's why we haven't that's why we haven't done it yet makes sense it makes sense that's a, a huge over you're basically doubling your overhead when you introduce new sizes uh I am wondering, oh, here's a question that uh, came from Midnight Modder. Uh, he simply asks, why are your boots better than others out there? Yeah, so um, I think our boots are better because, first of all, there's over 250 steps that go into them. It takes longer to make them. They're harder to make. Our input materials, I believe, are better. Our leather quality is better. Um, and then just from a pure like business standpoint, um, people, 
people, I, we have a pretty close relationship with our customers. And, you know, it's pretty easy to, 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 to find us, the people behind the company. I'm a veteran, um, so, you know, veteran-owned business. So from a pure, like, product standpoint, I think we're better. And then from a business, like, who do you want to buy from standpoint, I think we're better. So that's why. Yeah, I love it. Talking about the Spanish leather, I mean, that is a, a famous leather. I mean, there's even songs about Spanish leather. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what drew you to to work with factories and, and Spanish tanneries and boot makers? Mm -hmm. Some of it was, um, so the, the, the cool thing about the factory is there's, there's not, oh, wait, wait, I want to also say on the why we're better too. So mm -hmm. our price point, our, we, I want to over deliver on quality. So our boots are, are, for the price point, you can't find anything else out there at that price point that is as good as ours. So that's like the other big thing. I want when somebody opens their boots to feel like they got more than they paid for. So that's what we try to do. And if been in, and you know, you've, you've opened them up and like, you know what we're selling for. And so I feel like we're over delivering on value as well. Oh, without a doubt, the experience is really exciting. It makes me, it makes the, it makes me feel at least really special to open up and have those bags there and everything. It's, it, it's a nice experience. Yeah. Thank you. So we're, um, but going back to the, so, so Spain, the, the, uh, family that, that started the factory back in the early 1900s, so over a hundred years ago, came from the tannery business. So the two, two sons broke off from the family business, which was near Valencia. And that's what they were, I mean, that's what their expertise was, was tanneries and tannage. And they came to the U.S. Um, the tra and traveling in the early 1900s to California and noticed their country boots, which is what they call them in Spain, um, which we call them cowboy boots, but they, you know, similar working with livestock shoes. And they, uh, they said, hey, why don't we start, I mean, this is like, it's crazy. Like, why don't we start making cowboy boots in Spain? And that is, that's how long they've been doing it. But centuries before that, it was in the leatherworking business, you know, business. So um, it's just Spain's got a great reputation. They've got um, a, a lot of small tanneries to choose from. And so they've, they've got like a great, great access to great leathers right there. Without a doubt. And I've been seeing a lot of comments on Instagram and in the YouTube video um, and also, it's a common question that you see a lot about why the boots aren't made in the United States. But this is something that I don't think people realize that Spain has a deep history in the boots and the leather that they use. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, there's also in, in the U.S., I mean, the kind of bigger economic reason for it. It's not so we're, we're not making in Spain from a price you know, to, to save money. Um, but, but the, the U S capabilities in, in footwear manufacturing have just steadily declined over the past, you know, 50, hundred years. I'm not opposed to having a factory in Texas making certain styles. Um, it's something that I would like to do. It's just a matter of like the, the factory options in the U S are pretty limited, um, for voices that can make them for you. Um, you know, you can like count them on one hand and a lot of them may be making for themselves or have non-competes and stuff. So it's just, it's limited. It's not, we're not making it in Spain to save money. That's for sure. And you started in the U S as a, as a custom maker. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So we started, when I started, I didn't have, um, a, a, a whole, you know, millions of dollars to start a shoe company, um, or even hundreds of thousands, or even a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> or had less than that. And so in order to, to be able to start a shoe company, the way that I could do it was start with custom boots because people would buy, basically pay for half of the boot up front, which allowed you to produce them, and then you deliver the final product, and then they would pay for it. So you didn't have a ton of inventory carrying costs. And we did that with custom, a custom boot shop out of El Paso, and um, I tell people, like, if they want get to get custom boots made, 
uh, to email us and we will gladly introduce them to the family that makes them because they do great work um, and they've been doing it for lots of years, but it's just not a scalable process for us. Like we couldn't make as many as we, we would need to be able to ship them quickly. And they're, and they're expensive too. What are you looking forward to in the spring release? Uh, you mentioned that earlier uh, in this stream. Can you tell us a little bit about what you got coming? Sure, um, and it's soon here. We we slowed it down. We were gonna launch this right right now, and we we slowed it down a little bit because it's just hard to get anybody's attention right now to say, hey, look, we've got this coming. Mm -hmm. um, so for for men's, the, there's some there's a there is a distressed yokum that that. Uh, that's going back to the, do you like to distress it yourself or to come out of the box? So I do have men's style that's like coming from men's, the Aster lace up that I absolutely love. love. And then the Johnny is coming in suede. It's Oh, no. oh it's nice. Beautiful. It's so cool looking. And it's coming in suede. Um, yeah, when Firestone Walker Brewery, they got uh, the family that owns Firestone Walker. He's a former Marine, and he let us do our photo shoot at their winery. So it's out in like the hill, rolling hills of California. It's absolutely, it was so pretty. But we, we you know, when I'm when we're do, doing the styling for the shoot, I looked at all all the boots together, and I was just like filled with so much like uh, like joy about a retail store. Because seeing them alter in a tangible way in person, I'm just so proud of, of you know, what everybody that, that I work with has, has accomplished and put together. So there's a, a lot of, like, cool stuff. There's not, actually, it's not a ton. We, we want to keep, keep it small and limited. Um, but we have a nice collection that's coming out. And women's, there's, like, two. Awesome. For me, I like, like them all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's uh, harder to pick on, on the women's, but so we have some really cute white. Great. Well, I am looking forward to everything that uh, you're going to be releasing. And I just want to say thanks again for uh, partnering with me for the giveaway for the Walker slash Fayette. Um, this is a great boot, and I'm really excited to get these into on, on somebody's feet. Yes, thank you again. Uh, for your time, Sarah. I really appreciate it, and good luck with everything. Thank you. We'll be back in Texas, hopefully, soon. I'm a walker down that ranch road. I'm a walker looking so sleek and so bold. I'm a walker down that ranch road today.